Hi guys, welcome to Lidgyan. Let's move on with the sixth part of this video. The first question is, which novels of T. H. Lawrence were banned on publication? Your options are A. Sons and Lovers, B. The Rainbow, C. Women in Love, or D. Lady Chatterley's Lover. This type of questions are really important. You should remember such questions by heart. So let's see the answer. It is option C that is 2, 3 and 4. The Rainbow, Women in Love and Lady Chatterley's Lover, all three were banned. The Rainbow and Women in Love were banned for their themes of same-sex relationships. Lady Chatterley's Lover, written in Italy and published in 1928, is Lawrence's most notorious novel banned in England for its sexual content until a trial in 1960 allowed it to be widely read. It was also banned for obscenity in the US, Canada, Australia, India and Japan. The book soon became notorious for its story of the physical and emotional relationship between a working class man and an upper class woman, its explicit descriptions of sex and its use of then unprintable four letter words. Moving on, which of Lawrence's novel deals with the three generations of Brangwen family from the middle of the 19th century to the early years of 20th century? Your options are A. Women in Love, B. The Rainbow, C. Sansan's Lovers, or D. The White Peacock. The answer is B. The Rainbow. At the end of The Rainbow, Ursula Brangwen, the main character, rejects a future life with her fiancé because he is insufficiently aware of her as a unique individual. For Lawrence, awareness of the essential otherness of one's partner is fundamental to a truly harmonious relationship. If either partner is too weak or seeks to dominate the other, then mutual destruction will follow. What is the sequel of The Rainbow? Your options are A. Women in Love, B. Sons and Lovers, C. Lady Chatterley's Lover, or D. The White Peacock. The answer is A. Women in Love. Much of this novel, including an opening chapter which was suppressed for many years, discusses the close male and male relationship between Gerald Critch and Rupert Bokin. So do remember, the prequel Rainbow dealt with a female-female relationship and its sequel Women in Love deals with a male-male relationship. Moving on, what is the name of the titular character in Lawrence's Lady Chatterley's Lover? Your options are A. Lady Constance Chatterley, B. Lady Mary Chatterley, C. Melors Chatterley or D. Elizabeth Chatterley? The answer is A. Lady Constance Chatterley. Lady Chatterley's lover brings together Lawrence's industrial and social concerns with the account of Lady Constance Chatterley's sexual liaison with the lower class Melors, a gamekeeper. Her husband, Sir Clifford, had been wounded in the First World War and the relationship with Melors has been seen by many critics as a vivid symbol of social and class shifts as a result of the war. Moving on, D.H. Lawrence wrote the following in a letter about writing of the rainbow to a friend. Identify the friend this letter was written to. You can pause the video and read the lines. Your options are A. Robert Tressel, B. Arthur Morrison, C. Henry James or D. Edward Garnett. The answer is D. Edward Garnett. Examine for a moment an ordinary mind on an ordinary day. The statement is taken from a. Virginia Woolf's The Modern Novel, Thomas Hardy's The Well Beloved, Robert Tressel's The Ragged Trousered Philanthropists, or Lawrence's Aaron's Rod. The answer is A. Virginia Woolf's The Modern Novel. Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway describes the events of one single day in central London through the mind of its titular character. What is her name? Your options are A. Eliza Dalloway, B. Vanessa Dalloway, C. Clarissa Dalloway, or D. Always referred to as Mrs. Dalloway without the mention of any first name. The answer is C. Clarissa Dalloway. She is to be the hostess of a party for high society friends later the same evening. The novel contains many flashbacks to Clarissa Dalloway's past experience as she seeks to bring together past memory and present action and as she endeavors to balance the need for privacy with the need for communication with other people. Moving on. Virginia Woolf's To The Lighthouse records two days in the life of a family on holiday, one before the Great War, one after it, when some members have died. What war is being referred to? A. World War I, B. Second World War, C. American Civil War, or D. The mental turmoil the family went through after Mrs. Ramsey's death. The answer is A. The First World War. Virginia Woolf with her husband, Leonard Woolf, Founded the Hogarth Press in which year? 
The Blinders is a collection of 15 short stories by James Joyce, first published in 1914. The stories comprise a naturalistic description of Irish middle class life in and around Dublin in the early years of the 20th century. In The Dead, Gabriel Conroy attends a party and later as he speaks with his wife, he is shocked out of his self-satisfaction and egotism by learning of his wife's love for a young man she had known for many years before. The first story in this collection is entitled The Sisters. Old father, old artificer, stand me now and ever in good stead. As a line taken from A. Finnegan's Wake, B. Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, C. Ulysses, or D. Exiles. All these are works by <coughs> James Joyce only. The answer is B. Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man which is the last written work by James Joyce that took him 14 years to write. A. Ulysses, be a portrait of the artist as a young man, C. Finnegan's Wake or D. Exiles. The answer is C. Finnegan's Wake. In this novel, Joyce attempted to present the whole of human history as a dream in the mind of a Dublin innkeeper, H. C. Earwicker. Any attempt to depict life realistically is abandoned. In many ways, the novel is about language itself. Joyce uses puns and plays on words within and across both English and other languages. Moving on. River run past even Adams from swerve of shore to bend of bay. This is the beginning sentence of which of Joyce's novels? The options are same. The answer is C. Finnegan's Wake. Wyndham Lewis edited which magazine along with Ezra Pound? A. The Times, B. Blast, C. Exiles or D. Poetry? The answer is B. Blast. Goodbye to all that is Goodbye to all that is an autobiography of A. Wyndham Lewis, B. Aldous Huxley, C. Frederick Manning or D. Robert Graves? The answer is D. Robert Graves. Published in 1928, its title indicates the extent to which the author felt that the war marked the end of an era. With this, we reach the end of this video. You can leave your doubts in the comment section below. Till then, happy learning!